Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 12, Chester Himes. Chester Himes' early life didn't exactly predict the success he had as perhaps the foremost African-American author of crime fiction during the 20th century. The son of a college professor, Himes was himself expelled from college for misbehavior and then imprisoned for eight years on armed robbery charges. He began writing and publishing short stories while in prison, and after his release, he eventually moved to Los Angeles to write both screenplays and novels. His earliest works chronicled the Second Great Migration, the widespread movement of African Americans away from the rural South in the post-World War II years. Like Richard Wright and James Baldwin before him, Himes emigrated to Europe, living first in Paris, then in southern France, and finally on the Mediterranean coast of Spain, where he died in 1984. While in Europe, he began writing a series of books about a pair of rough-and-tumble black cops in New York City that made him a literary star in the 1950s and 1960s. Himes's Harlem detective novels were a major influence on such well-known contemporary authors as Ishmael Reed and Walter Mosley. The following excerpt from Cotton Comes to Harlem provides a glimpse into the unruly and morally ambiguous setting in which Himes's two detectives, Coffin Ed Johnson and Gravedigger Jones, operate in the series of novels that feature them. It was a big night in the lives of all those assembled colored people. Now at last, after months of flaming denouncements of the injustice and hypocrisy of white people hurled from the pulpit of his church, after months of eulogy heaped upon the holy land of Africa, young Reverend Deco Malley was at last putting words into action. Tonight, he was signing up the people to go on his three ships back to Africa. Huge hand drawings of the ships stood in prominent view behind the speaker's table, appearing to have the size and design of the SS Queen Elizabeth. Before them stood Reverend O'Malley, his tall, lithe body clad in dark summer worsted, his fresh, handsome face exuding benign authority and inspiring total confidence, flanked by his secretaries and the two young men most active in recruiting applicants. A vacant lot in the Valley of Harlem, near the railroad tracks, where its slum tenements had been raised for a new housing development, had been taken over for the occasion. More than a thousand people milled about the patches of old, uneven concrete amid the baked, cindery earth, littered with stones, piles of rubbish, dog droppings, broken glass, scattered rags, and clusters of stinkweed. The hot summer night was lit by flashes of sheet lightning, threatening rain, and the air was oppressive with dust, density, and motor fumes. Stink drifted from the surrounding slums, now more overcrowded than ever due to the relocation of families from the site of the new buildings to be erected to relieve the same overcrowding. But nothing troubled the jubilance of these dark people filled with faith and hope. For more information about Himes, follow the link at the top of this page to a rich essay about him and a preview of a recent biography of Himes by scholar Lawrence Jackson. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.